which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Next item of business is our spotlight uh, tonight on Lockwood Matthews Mansion Young Writers Contest winners. Uh, Ms. Keyes. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our spotlight section of our agenda for Tuesday, March 17th, 2015. And tonight we will be honoring Lockwood Matthews Mansion Museum for the Young Writers Competition winners. The Norwalk Board of Education tonight recognizes students who participated in and won a writing competition organized by the Lockwood Matthew Mansion Museum. Last school year, the museum launched a young writers competition for students from area schools. The purpose was to encourage creative thinking and writing and to introduce mid to late 19th century history and the arts to young people. Museum educators dressed in period costume to meet with teachers and students in third and eighth grade, and um, I'm sorry, third and eighth grade classrooms to introduce them to the mansion. That was followed by a visit to the museum where students drew ideas and inspiration for their story. The competition required students to create a mystery story set between 1868 and 1900 with the mansion as the backdrop. The story needed to be between 500 and 800 words for the elementary school level and up to 2,500 words for eighth graders. While the program was started last year, winners were announced in this current school year. Writers of the top stories had the opportunity to attend a ceremony at the museum where they were introduced to New York Times best-selling author, Steve Barry. On behalf of all of us here on the Board of Education, we'd like to offer our congratulations to the following students. We have Amy St. Ahmad, Eliza, Ayala, Jamie de Guzman, Bilal Neiman, Samantha Moody, and Bruna Silvestri. We also would like to thank the teachers who supported these students during this program. Lupita Williams, as well as Sue Straffolino from Columbus Magnet School, Martha Franco from Kendall Elementary School, and Holly Bossinger from Nathan Hale Middle School. We also would like to thank Patsy Brescia, who is on the board of directors, who's the president, who's been very inst inspirational and very involved in this program as well. Here, Nora Public Schools is very fortunate to have supportive community leaders, including the Lockwood Matthew Museum. We're grateful to the museum, its patrons and benefactors for their commitment to Norwalk Schools, as well as to their cultural and educational programs such as this. Do we have our certificates, Mr. Lyons? Well, let's see. We okay. sure do. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, sure what I'd like to do, um, I'm hoping many of the students will be here tonight. I'm going to mention your name, and once I do, if you can come up to the board here, um, shake our hands. We'd love to shake your hand, and we'd like to give you a certificate. So the first student that we have is Amy St. Ahmad. Congratulations. Congratulations. Eliza Ayala. Congratulations. Are you one of our middle schoolers? Okay, all right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Made that very clear. <laughs> Jamie de Guzman. <laughs> I'll make sure she gets a certificate if she's not here tonight. Bilal Miman. Former 
grade, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ninth grade, right? Yeah. High school? Okay, come. Just well, congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> 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 no hope. So, uh, <laughs> and we have Samantha Muti. Silvestri. She wasn't able to make it tonight, but we'll make sure she gets her certificate. We also have someone here, Elise Sullivan, if she's here. Oh, I'm going to hold that. I have to say that this program, I was fortunate enough, thank you, um, to be there for the ceremony, and it really is just great to see these students work so hard um, and really be part of this program and win these wonderful awards. Um, I also would like to thank, if, if she's here tonight, Lapita Williams. I don't see Lapita. I see Sue Strappolino. Thank you, Sue, from Columbus. Is Martha Franco here from Kendall? No, we want to thank her as well. Um, Holly from Nathan Hale Middle School. Thank her. And also to thank Patsy Brescia. Patsy, if you could say hi. Thank you so much for all you do at Rockford. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, public comments. Mr. Kucinis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Public <coughs> comment section. When I call your name out, please come up to the podium. And when you get to the podium, please give us your name and your address uh, for the transcript. Uh, also, you'll have three minutes. And our guidelines are please keep things civil. When there are 30 seconds left, I will wave my hand. At that point, we ask that you uh, close your comments. Uh, our first person up is Anna Forbes. Hello, my name is Anna Mattery T. Forbes. I reside at 64 Bell Drive in Omaha. I am a pop shop winner. Um, on the 8th, we have our second annual Harlem Wizard fundraiser. We, we email all of the board to participate in our event, and we want to thank Artie Casimus and Mayor Rilling as our partners, Mike Barbas, Mike Lyons, and Liz Lyons as volunteers and financial contributors. This is a community event that brings us all together from different areas of the city and ages for an afternoon of fun. This year, we're able to raise approximately $7,000. Oh, this is a small step toward the larger goal of renovating our current library to a learning commons, which will support our children for 21st century learning. We understand that as a district, we were finalists for the Race to the Top grant. Although we did receive it, it is our hope that the district will continue to pursue funding for capital improvements that are necessary to sustain the increasing demands of the Common Core Standards and the 21st Century Land. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm still sore from that game. <laughs> I was just going to say the same thing. Yes, I know Mr. Kasimis was designated uh, Twinkle Toes Kasimis during that game. What was, what was yours, Mayor? The first time I was a little squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I passed the ball between the, the uh, wizard's legs there, you go, oh, there's Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. So. <laughs> Jolly Green Giant? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Jolly Green, Green Giant, Giant right down the back. Joe. <laughs> Oh, well, we had a bunch of them. That was a fun night. Yeah, it, was. <clears throat> it was. Okay, next we have Miss Brenda Penn Williams. My name is Brenda Penn Williams. I reside at 21 Karen Drive in Omaha. Good evening, board members. As a grandparent, a grandmother of elementary twins, I am appalled and quite frankly disgusted to read the racist rhetoric that is elected BOE member Jack Chiaramonte engaged in on his Facebook page. This is not the You're first not controversy regarding racism. Remember, 
when he referred to the BOB member Shirley Mosley, the girl who cried black, he should be removed from the BOB because obviously his views doesn't represent the makeup of this city. Shame on you, Jack Gervonta. <coughs> in the Jack Crow era. Whoops, I mean Jim Crow. Thank you. Okay, next we have uh, Mr. Jeff Spar. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeffrey Spar, 32 Stony Brook Road. Uh, I saw some pictures of Artie on uh, TV on the <laughs> web playing basketball, Artie up game. They came in checkers, though. <laughs> uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of the uh, resolution that's before the, the Board of Education for Autism Awareness for the month of April, celebrated across the world. The United Nations has made a declaration of autism the month of April. I know the mayor has graciously agreed to uh, come to an event that we're having on March 30th at the Green. Um, uh, just a couple of statistics that um, the prevalence of autism <coughs> is 168 children. It uh, afflicts or affects boys five times more frequently than girls. Um, there's about <coughs> three and a half million people uh, living in the United States that have autism. Mm -hmm. uh, and it cuts across all racial, ethnic, and social economic lines. Uh, unfortunately, 35% of the children who have autism uh, have not received a job or gone to higher education after high school. We all know that autism is a complex developmental disability that typically appears during the first three years of life. Uh, it's a result of a neurological <coughs> disorder that affects the normal functioning of the brain. It impacts the development of social interaction, communication skills, and behavior. You also hear the term about somebody being on the spectrum, but what does that mean? Uh, autism is a spectrum uh, disorder, which means is that there's a common saying about uh, people on the spectrum. Once you've met somebody on the spectrum, you've just met one person on the spectrum. They, it manifests itself in so many different ways. Um, the other thing which is unfortunate is that autism is usually, or many times, not a standalone disorder. It also has many uh, more other uh, uh, problems. Um, for example, it could be other mental impairments, it could be learning disabilities, it could be ADHD, OCD, which is occupational compulsive disorder. Um, uh, so what, and it makes the, the, the unfortunate thing is that when you have these comorbid conditions, whereas autism, autism itself is difficult to address through any type of therapy, when you have the other um, when you have the other comorbid conditions, it makes it more difficult to address. So, for example, my son is one of those uh, individuals that has severe ADHD, and he has what's known as Asperger's. Uh, it's a high functioning problem. Um, the problem with that, though, is because with his uh, ADHD, he's easily distracted and he goes off target. Um, the problem then is that he becomes compulsive as to where he's going, and he, he goes, when he goes off target or off a topic, it's tough to get him back. It's like a, it's like a train coming, to try, a little toy train trying to get it back on the track. Um, I'd like to say is, one of the things, like, why do we have autism awareness? We want to stress two things. Number one is that those children with autism, they're different, they're not defective. And they have different disabilities, they don't have, they have different abilities, not a disability. And I appreciate your awareness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well, there's a great picture of your daughter that she posted on Facebook with the Winter Guard. <laughs> Thanks. My Facebook fan is best thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next we have Ms. Sue Haney.
transparent, parent-child focused, and certainly include input from NORAC's own early childhood members, childhood, childhood council members. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's all that we have signed up for public comments. All yours. Okay. <coughs> Very good. We will move on to the superintendent's report. Mr. Connolly. Oh, good evening. Um, there are three things I'd like to report on tonight. And the first <coughs> is you're going to be asked um, when you get to the consent agenda to approve the retirement of seven administrators, five who are retiring as part of the incentive program and two others that are uh, just offering the retirement effect at the end of the year. Uh, and accepting these retirements, I think the board and the community should be cognizant of the following. Uh, these seven people have dedicated 178 years of uh, professional work to the Norwalk Public Schools. So we're losing a significant, uh, a significant uh, institutional history, a significant uh, number of people who um, are, are leaving and all of their educational talents, unfortunately, will go with them. I'd just like to mention the seven people that are leaving and a little bit about them. Uh, first is our Deputy Superintendent, Do uh, Tony Donia. Tony has been with the district uh, 20, 36 years. Um, he's performed, as I took a look at his, uh, his personnel history, he started as a social studies teacher, has been a central office administrator, has been the interim principal at Norwalk High School, has been the interim superintendent, and is currently the deputy superintendent. And in between, there are probably six other job categories that he filled. Um, again, Tony uh, leaves us with 36 years of dedicated service. The next person I'd like to mention is D, uh, Dr. D. Uh, Kariki. Uh, she's the assistant supervisor of special ed. Uh, believe it or not, B has given us 48 years of dedicated service to the school system, both as a special ed administrator and as a special ed teacher. Uh, the third person is uh, Paul uh, Krasanich, um, principal of Tracy School. Uh, Paul has given us 29 plus years of service. Uh, Paul is currently a principal, but in the past he was a <coughs> PE administrator, a housemaster, and probably best known for his coaching talents, coaching both football, uh, track, and um, at, I believe, at Norwalk High School. Uh, next is uh, uh, Linda Sampero. Uh, she is the principal at Ponus Ridge. Uh, she has given us 15 years of service as a school administrator. Um, Linda is very active in the community, and uh, back when she had children in the school, was one of the leaders in the uh, parent PTO movement here in the community. Uh, the fifth person is Aline. <laughs> Uh, Lemadola. Uh, she is retiring as the site uh, director at Tracy School. Uh, she's been with the district 25 years, so Tracy loses both their principal and their uh, site director. And um, prior to becoming a site director, um, Aline was a elementary uh, school teacher here. Uh, the two other people who are retiring who were not part of the incentive program is uh, first is Fran Mahoney. Uh, Fran is the principal of Woolpit School. Uh, she's been with the district 14 years, and uh, Fran actually worked for me in Bridgeport as a special ed administrator uh, before she came to uh, Norwalk. And last is Ross McCarthy, who's the director of the Center for Global Studies at uh, Brian McMahon High School, which is a well-recognized <laughs> and well-regarded regional program. Um, uh, Fran was a housemaster. Uh, she was very active in the community, and I don't think this counts toward her pension, but she was also a former Board of Education member for seven years. So um, I want to acknowledge and recognize all of these folks for their dedication. I think uh, from a school district, they'll be uh, sorely missed. And uh, in talking to the board tonight, the, uh, we plan to start the recruitment process uh, as quickly as we can on uh, uh, but the, all these folks will be here until the end of the school year. I don't know if any of them are here tonight, if they just want to stand. I know Tony has to come. Anyone else here? Okay. 
one of the things I, I'd like to recommend to the board, and I think in conjunction with their peers, is have some kind of recognition uh, <coughs> ceremony for these folks at the, uh, uh, before the end of the school year. Um, the second thing I'd like to uh, I'd like to talk to you about is the um, is a resolution that's before you a little bit later that uh, Rich uh, will be putting forth, and that's for a transfer of an appropriation of uh, money uh, for the South Noah Community Center after the Bell Program. I think, as the board is aware. Um, We've been working very, very hard with the South uh, Norwalk Community Center uh, in planning and eventually implementing a very needed program. Uh, one of uh, Dr. Rivera's last acts, I know it was the very last day he was here, is to sign the agreement with the, uh, with the South Norwalk Community Center for the program. Our hope is the, uh, uh, we've hit a couple of hiccups, but I think they're all taken care of. One, there was some issue about the condition of the building, particularly the roof, and that came out of some comments at a uh, city a common council uh, uh, subcommittee hearing. Uh, all of the issues regarding the roof have been have been satisfied to uh, have been satisfied as far as I'm concerned. The second hiccup we had was when the program was originally planned. Uh, part of the funding was thought to come from Title I, which is a federal grant. And in further research, we find that uh, Title I money would not be eligible for this program. So therefore, uh, that's the reason the Rich is coming to you tonight to uh, fill that gap. Is our hope that if all goes well, the program will be starting up uh, at the end of April at the very, very latest, the first week of May. Uh, it's a needed program. It's a program that uh, uh, it's been long planned, and uh, it's certainly uh, my intention to make sure that we follow through on our commitment to the children uh, who will be eligible for that and get the program off the ground. Um, the, there are two other programs that I want to mention to you, and I'm going to weave them into my report. First is the Mayor's science, uh, Summer Science Program. Uh, Tammy um, Makas, our uh, science coordinator, is here with staff from the, uh, from the aquarium, the Nor Norwalk Maritime Center. Uh, this is really an exciting program. I really want to congratulate the administration, the mayor, as well as the, uh, as the Maritime Center for really putting this program together, and obviously it was planned with, uh, uh, with Tammy's assistance. This will give a number, I believe it's 50 7th and 8th graders, an opportunity to have a very, very, very unique experience in the summer uh, using one of the greatest assets that the state has here in, this, uh, here in Norwalk, and that's the Maritime Center, and all of the programs, equipment, uh, et cetera, that the Maritime Center has available to them. I've always thought of the Maritime Center as a jewel in Connecticut, and I'm just delighted that we've developed this very, very deep partnership uh, with the schools that I think and I hope will be uh, the start of many, many more like it. So, Tammy, do you want to come up and kind of uh, brief the board? We did have a press conference uh, last week announcing the program. We'll be recruiting students uh, very, very shortly, but I think the program was important enough that we wanted to bring it to the board's attention and uh, and have it on the board agenda. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tammy Mokas, and I am the uh, K-12 Science Instruction Specialist for the Board of Education. Um, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to come to you this evening to speak about this exciting program that Mr. Connolly uh, spoke about. The Mayor's Engineering and Science Program is going to be held at the Norwalk Maritime Aquarium. It's going to involve 57th and 8th graders. These 57th and 8th graders will have a choice between two different sessions. Uh, one session is the last week of uh, July, and this is another session in August. These students will have the opportunity to apply for these sessions via an application process that will be available to them toward the <coughs> end of March. Students will be selected uh, for the program by their building administrator of their middle school, and also by their teacher designee, science teacher designee at the middle school. Um, upon acceptance um, into the program, 
The children will then have the opportunity to explore many facets of marine and marine science and engineering. Um, and we hope that the students will continue with their enthusiasm as they progress through high school and also um, for their post-secondary plans. You may be wondering why we targeted or why we focused our <coughs> program on seventh and eighth graders. Research shows that children at that particular age um, begin to lose an interest in science. And if we can engage them in authentic learning experiences that will carry them throughout their post-secondary um, plans and also through high school, then we, then we have a target audience <coughs> for engineering and science careers um, later on, which also can also help us in the normal community as well. Tom Naiman is here, who's the Director of Education at uh, the North Maritime Aquarium, and he's going to speak specifically about the program and what children will be engaged in during their time um, in our program. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's, uh, as Tammy said, I'm Tom Naiman. I'm the Director of Education at the Maritime Aquarium, and it's a pleasure to be here, and we're so excited about this program. We will have, as Tammy said, 50 7th and 8th graders joining us for a full week at the aquarium. We'll have a, de a day devoted to maritime technology, a day devoted to ecosystems, a day devoted to conservation, a day devoted to animal care. And we'll give these students the opportunity to understand um, some of the careers that they might pursue later in life. Um, we'll give them an opportunity to meet with our dive team and to learn about the science and technology of diving. We'll give them the chance to ride our new hydroelectric research vessel, which we'll be launching in late sun, in uh, the late spring. They'll learn about the hydroelectric technology, which is very innovative. They'll visit, they'll visit our, um, inner, our, our immersive butterfly exhibit. They'll see some films in our IMAX theaters. And at the end of the week, we'll invite their parents in to get a taste of what they've been doing. We have a very, very active camp program at the aquarium, and this is a, a real pleasure because it allows us to open up um, what we do to students who might not be able to afford it. We're also extremely excited because, as some of you may know, we have a wonderful STEM after-school program for Norwalk's public high school students. We have 60 students enrolled this year, and they join us one day a week after school uh, to learn about STEM careers, STEM topics, and many of them uh, will be with us for three, if not four years. Um, we're in our second year now, and we had great retention, and we hope to see this summer program for seventh and eighth graders be a feeder program for that high school opportunity. So it will allow us to have uh, students for as many as five or six years coming to know the aquarium intimately, work with our scientists and our educators, and really form a, a, a partnership that, that, will, that will be something that, that they'll remember and grow on throughout their entire lives. Thanks very much. Thank you. I do have um, a Okay, thank you. Um, again, uh, the uh, Norwalk Maritime Center and the aquarium is truly an asset, just not for the city of Norwalk, but for the whole Northeast region. And I'm just delighted the kind of partnerships that they, that they have developed with the school system here and partnerships that we certainly can expand. And as a superintendent in a former port city, um, I was always jealous of Norwalk because I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a facility like the... Uh, like the Maritime Center, and uh, uh, 
we I think we used to come down here on occasion and, and borrow classes and that sort of thing. But it's a it's a great asset, uh, not only for Noel, for the region, and I'm just delighted that we are having this partnership. And I want to thank the mayor and the city council, actually, for uh, for developing the funding for this. It, uh, it's it's really going to be a uh, an exemplary program, not only for Norwalk, but I think it will be looked on uh, by other parts of the state of Connecticut, too. And lastly, I just wanted to comment very briefly on the uh, Lockwood Mansion, the Lockwood Matthews Mansion. I had the opportunity uh, uh, last week to meet with the leadership of, of the mansion, and um, obviously you saw the young people tonight who, who uh, won a writing contest, and we're developing a new writing contest for this coming year, or for this spring. Uh, the mansion will be opening up their servants' quarters. And those of you who, uh, like me, might be uh, addicted to Downton Abbey or, <laughs> or the cottages at, uh, at Newport, um, I always was concerned about the living conditions uh, that people in service to these mansions had. And at least the staff at the uh, Lockwood Mansion tells me that when they open up the servants' quarters in a few weeks, the um, servants' quarters there were really, um, were really quite generous and uh, were quite spacious and well-appointed when you compare them to the, um, when you compare them to some of the other mansions of that period. And here's a connection. It's St. Patrick's Day, and in asking who these people in service were back in the 1850s, most of them were uh, from Ireland. And most of the servants that came here were, uh, were from Ireland. They, they, and many of these people settled in Norwalk. And I'm sure if many of us who have Irish descent look at our ancestry, you might find that some of them actually were in service back 150 years ago at Lockwood Mansion. So that's my little segue into St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> but at the same time to, uh, uh, to congratulate the people in, in, at uh, Lockwood Mansion and know that we're going to give them every support we can as we, uh, as we have the essay contest or the writing contest. And the contest will be centered around the, uh, the servants' quarters and the servants that came here in the, uh, in the 1850s. So with that, that concludes my report, Mr. Lyons. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Mr. Lyons, can I yes. ask a question? I'm sorry. I, I should have um, raised my hand earlier. I had some questions about the aquarium. The mayor, if you could answer it for me, sure. the aquarium. Um, I know it's a week long, and it's fully funded, so right. the parents don't have to pay for that, no cost to families. Um, what is the criteria? I mean, I know that the um, administrators are involved and the teachers, but what are the criteria? Well, it's seventh and eighth grade. Seventh and eighth grade, they I know that. They have to fill out an application. Right. Uh, they're going to be doing an essay. Okay. And then we have people that are going to serve on the team. One of the uh, councilwomen, Sharon Stewart, will be on the uh, selection committee. To review the essays? To review essay. the essays and to help select the children. Okay. But it's going to be re the recommendation from the middle school principals is going to be also highly regarded and highly uh, So the teachers recommend yeah. and they do an essay and then it's forwarded over to the principal? Right. Okay. And how many, I know it's 50 to 70 students, I didn't do the math on this, but well, there's 50 students total. 50 students total, and seven 25, graders. 25 in each, each class. Okay, okay. And it's week long, only a week long. Right, it's funded great. by the uh, Mayor's Energy and Environmental Task Force. Okay. Uh, we, fund, uh, we gave a total of 10,000, we've got another 10,000 coming. And it's taking place the end of the summer, is that correct? July, last week of July and the uh, uh, week in August. I'm not sure if it's the first week, uh, but it's one week in July and one week in August, two separate classes. So it's effective this year? Yes. This July. Okay. And when do they do the essays? When does this all start happening? I believe it's in progress right now. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's a great program. Yeah, it sounds Thank fabulous. You. You know, um, Tidy, the first session will be the uh, June 29th to July 3rd. Oh, June. I thought you yeah, said last week. Yeah, it starts in June, then the first week of July, and then the, the second session will be August 10th to August the 14th. Okay. Okay. Ms. Harris? Yeah. I just wanted to make a comment on one of our retirees, Linda Sumter. Um, I, Linda was one of my principals. I, Linda was, was quiet, but she was very fair, and I thought she was very ethical to her staff, her students, and the parents. She addressed all of our concerns seriously. She took everything seriously, um, and she was not opposed to pushing students. She didn't take it personally if a parent 
asked to have their student push. She didn't make it make us feel like, oh, that's too much work for our teachers. Um, I just really appreciated her, and I think Norwalk is losing a very great asset. I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Mosby? Yeah, I, um, all, of, all of them, uh, from Tony to Dona to Paul to B, Linda Sumter, they all is going to be truly missed because that is a lot of history and knowledge that is walking out of the door. And um, seriously, we all need to really, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have embraced having them here because that is a lot. And that's going to be some big shoes to fill with, with them being gone uh, with, with those years and the knowledge, the history. And that we're going to be losing from this district. And I wish them all success, luck, and, um, and, um, I, I, and they're going to truly be missed because they were a big part of the Nall School District, a very big part. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, then we'll move on to uh, actions. The first item is the consent calendar. Tonight's nice consent calendar is uh, items 62A, approval of personnel, 62B, approval of budget transfers, 62C, approval of trip to Norwalk High School to Belize. One thing I should note is that the um, <coughs> one item on the personnel items should be withdrawn. The very last one, uh, request for appointment, to, uh, that uh, individual has withdrawn their, uh, their acceptance of the position, the teaching position. So, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the consent that? calendar. Athens. The last one. The very last one. Jennifer Purdy. Jennifer Purdy, this one right here. That one's the withdrawn. One. This is Mary. No, it says Jennifer Purdy. This oh, that's, that's oh, the old packet. The, the new packet was, was emailed out to the members uh, yesterday. And it doesn't make any difference because pulling this off leaves us right back yeah. at the original. Yeah. Um, so well, let me get the motion on the table and then if you want to remove something. Look yep. Perfect. So is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Uh, so moved by Ms. Rivas, a second, and Ms. Keyes. Okay. Are there any matters that people want removed from consent? I want to Ms. remove Mosby. 62B for discussion. Okay. Budget transfer is removed. Anything else? All right. Hearing none, we'll proceed to a vote to approve the consent calendar minus 62B. All in favor, please indicate. And that is unanimous. All right, next item is approval of budget transfers. Uh, is there a motion to approve the budget transfers? Ms. Rivas moves. Is there a second? Uh, Ms. Harris seconds. Any discussion? Yeah, um, Ms. Mosby. Yes, um, Rich, if you could come up. I just want to get some um, further clarification because I didn't want to in uh, interrupt you when you were giving your superintendent report. Sure. And I just want to get some clarification on the South Nola Community Center and this transfer that we're going to uh, possibly approve tonight. <coughs> and um, my, my question is because, uh, I'm, if, I, if I heard you right, we, we at first thought that this was going to be a Title I funded. Well, part uh, of it would be Title I. Right, right, part of it, right. Now, my, my question is that because now since the board has to put the funding, this funding in, will this be something that we have to sustain a goal in the future with this type of funding? Will this be part of our budget? So, you know, that's what I'm, I'm trying to get at. Uh, it's not part of the 
so there's no chance of you coming back asking for more money? Not for this. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Murray, then Ms. Rivas. Uh, yes. Um, is there any way that we could uh, be assured that there are no other agreements that were made um, that fall under this category where we thought we we're going to use the priority one money um, funding and now we're not? Is there anything else that falls under that as far as our agreements that were made, as you said, uh, just before the parting of our superintendent? This is the only one I'm aware of, but I think uh, we can. Uh Rich and I can inventory, but this is about the only one I'm aware of that uh, that needed to be implemented. Will, will we spend in priority schools or even the district portion of Title I goes to salaries? Goes to? Salaries. Okay. I would like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if you could just look into that. Um, we have a finance committee meeting on next month, so we have a little time. Okay. But if you could bring that as part of one of our agenda items, please. Thank you. Ms. Rivas. Yes, I, I would. I would really like to 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 see. I think I mentioned it before. If there would be more specifically, like the object codes, um, like on the, 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 the on the first on the twenty thousand, is coming from. It says uh, uh, object code one hundred one, and that is. Okay, and object code two six ninety. Two other supplies and materials. So, so how do you how do how does that designate it toward the after school program if it's other supplies and materials, and then Project Fifty Four is that is that um, designating that it's for the after school program? Uh, Project Fifty Four is the curriculum department. Uh, the board one fifty four three two zero zero two is the after school. Department. The the original code is this after school for after school right. program. After school program. So, but is there anything here that that by looking at the at the code numbers that would refer to South Norwalk? So, so then this code is also used for any kind of after school program we have in the school district. Uh, we only have one within the district. So Project Fifty Four was uh, designated as a curriculum or district wide item. So there's an after school program, whether it be like middle school or murals. Um, it would be 19 at West Ross. Under the project code. Correct. Okay, and then uh, the one seven, the object code one seventeen. Yes, that is the staff turnover credit. And then uh, our object six twenty two. Electricity. Six twenty five. Uh, natural gas. Okay, and and the original code one one six zero two six two. Two hundred. Okay, so so it would be it would be very helpful if um, if there is something that could be the same way that is printed on the first one that it says South Norwalk after school program. Something simple maybe would be to to uh, identify this more more detailed. So so if someone looking at it could uh, uh, obviously see from two the from two area. So it would be it would be awesome. And can you supply us with a with a current uh, listing of, of, of codes, object codes, and project codes? Sure. That's in the uh, budget book. Okay. <coughs> yes, Mr. Sims. I have a two part question. Uh, on the $20,000, again, for the furniture, uh, don't we have trailers of furniture <laughs> that mm -hmm. we can give them instead of spending the money? Um, That's right. No. We um, do not? No. What happened to it? What happened to it? Okay. Okay. Second part of the question is, when the program ends, does that furniture become property of NPS again? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Harris. Mike, I just, uh, I remember that Manny was going to talk to other agencies to see if we can get after school programs in other areas. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure that that ever came to fruition. Is this the only... I know that I know that he had started communications with with other organizations, but this is the only one that had developed to the point where there was a program ready to go. Because you know, remember that Sonic got several hundred thousand dollars from from the city from CDBG funds to to build out the facility so it would be ready for this. Um, I don't think anybody else is is that far along. But it was. I mean, the plan was. But this is going to be the first of maybe four or five of these centers, and my hope would be that that would still get carried out at some point. 
Okay. And um, is this, what's the eligibility requirement? Or is everyone in South Norwalk eligible to attend, or do they have a target audience? Do we know that any of that? Yeah, there is going to be uh, recruitment. Um, uh, Tony, could you talk a little bit about the uh, recruitment effort? Just one other thing, the, um, the hiccups as um, they were referred to, so everything's been addressed and signed off on Yes. for the safety of the students. Yeah, as far as the facility, we received uh, letters and, um, um, and some uh, evaluation of, of the facility, and as far as we're concerned, it's, it's fine. And, and the lottery, who's responsible? I mean, who's overseeing that? Is it just the center or is it the center in combination with the school system? With the school system. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or uh, Ms. Rivas? Yes, I, I, I also wanted to, wanted to find out, uh, there was a mention when this was up, for the, when this was being discussed, that transportation, I don't see transportation anywhere here. It was going to be our buses, uh, uh, are, are uh, buses that would, would take them from from whatever schools that that, that that they go to, and they would be bused to to South Knoll Community Center? So yeah, I mean, many of them are coming from outlying schools, and the buses would be taking them back to the area anyway. So they they would be bused from their home school um, to the uh, to the South End Community Center. And Tony, were we going to do one bus there? A lot of the children we felt. Uh, would walk home after the program was over. But um, I thought there was plans for maybe one bus. Are you, um, can you verify that? So would, would, would that be an extra charge, an extra charge under our, our, our transportation contract? Is there something additionally that's built into that? Or? none uh, all in favor of approving the uh, budget transfers uh, please indicate One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight all opposed abstentions one abstention okay eight in favor none opposed one abstention motion carries thank you all righty next is approval of signed agreement with Medicaid direct centrist group rich <laughs> Walk us through this one. Did we put it on to the make a motion? Pardon me? Oh, that's not an action. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, yeah, please uh, explain this one to us. Of what? Uh, well, not to ask questions. To debate, we have to have a motion. Yes. But he can do an explanation first. Oh, okay. Because we. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, we had discussed this at a uh, prior finance meeting as well as uh, two board meetings. Chair would entertain a motion to uh, approve the agreement with Medicaid Direct. Uh, Ms. Murray moves. Mr. Kasim is second. This is the discussion. Ms. Rivas. Um, so, so, <laughs> when will we start seeing uh, a difference in savings? 
would it be for uh, the remainder of the school year or the beginning of the next um, school year? We have to give about 30 days notice to talk tonight to terminate the agreement. Um, so if this is approved tonight, we can go forward with that 30 days notice. Um, there would be a little bit of an overlap to provide training and support to the special education department. Um, the savings would really probably materialize around the end of May. So the, toward the end of this fiscal year. So uh, can you uh, report back to us and let us know as it progresses on a, on a monthly basis then? Or? Okay. Anything else? Any comments? All right. Hearing none, uh, all in favor of approving the uh, contract, please indicate. And it is unanimous. Thank you. And Rich, moving right along. <laughs> Authorized contract for repair, upgrade, replace of public address systems. Um, as part of the school security initiatives and the uh, Nomar Police Department assessment of our schools, um, one of the items that we put a, a request for a proposal was uh, addressing our public address system. As you recall, in a prior board meeting, we carved out and hand separately. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the proposal to do the rest of the schools. Um, we received four bids. Um, we are recommending a and Electric ISD. Um, they were the lowest bidder, $221,824 for the remaining schools. Um, their references came back very favorable. Um, and so we are recommending for approval to go forward with the repair or replacement of district-wide public address systems for an amount not to exceed $233,000, which is within our capital budget, um, uh, as well as our spending plan and our budget plan for so this is approved. The next plan is to go to the Land Use Committee and the Common Council for Okay. And here we've, we've already approved the Nathan Hale situation, which was uniquely awful, so we were treating that separately. And this will deal with all of the other schools. And I note that you're looking at a total replacement for Norwalk High and Silvermine and repairs and upgrades at the other schools. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? Yep. Ms. Rivas. So the, the sites that are going to be repaired and not replaced, um, we will be, we'll have some sort of guarantee as to how long that repair will last. Yes, Is that um, correct? we had all the systems actually assessed by a third party. Um, Norwalk High and Silvermine were assessed at, um, they, they, it just wasn't feasible to actually repair it. You weren't really going to get that uh, more useful life out of it. Uh, whereas the other ones, some of them were minor repairs to um, somewhat medium range repairs, um, all with the expectation that you would have a long, long useful life once the repair is made. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay. All right. We will proceed to a vote. All in favor of approving the contract as indicated in the packet, please indicate. And it is unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. <coughs> Just sit down for a minute or two. We'll pull you back up again. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, approve the designation of the month of April as Autism Awareness Month. Uh, there's a resolution in the packet. Is there a motion? Ms. Rivas moves. Mr. Kasimis seconds. Is there any discussion? Yes. Ms. Rivas. Yes, I, I wanted to mention too, as, as um, since it was a, a public comment when they, they spoke about autism awareness, what what are we as a school district doing in the schools for that? Like like in our 19 schools, are we are we advertising it? Like are are we putting up uh, pictures, um, speaking to parents? What are we doing in our, in, at a school level at each school on Autism Awareness Month? I mean. We, we, we dedicated it for autism awareness, we approve it, and then how is it followed through? Like with, with um, Veterans Day, you know, we, 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 we have classes uh, in Veterans Day, and then we, we hold an entire uh, uh, day uh, remembering veterans, and when we teach, uh, the instruction is based on, along those lines. So, so to make more awareness of it, how do we make awareness in our school buildings about autism? What, uh, do the schools have something planned for Autism Awareness Month? Because, I mean, when you dedicate a month, there has to be something just to, to remember it. So, so, so administration, children, and parents are actually aware of it. We'll be meeting with uh, principals on a variety of issues next week, and this is one of them. And obviously, how you would uh, do awareness in a high school would be very, very different than how you would do awareness in a you know, K-5 school. So. Uh, we would ask principals to plan it so it's uh, so it's age appropriate. So the the type of activities we would have in 
at Wolf Pit will be very different than the type of activities we have at Brian McMahon. And, uh, but we want to, uh, you know, we, I, I really believe in leaving the creativity on how to do this to the, uh, to the individual schools and their administration and staff, but we, we will tell them that, you know, the board has adopted a resolution that uh, for uh, Autism Awareness Month, uh, I'm sure there's, there's a lot of advocacy groups out there that we could uh, we could tap for material, et cetera. So uh, uh, we're going to we'll, we'll be putting on our agenda with the principals next week. Okay, because uh, at, at a high school level, what, what I what I know is that they have there's a club. It's called the Best Buddies Club, and yep. they have one in Norwalk kind, they have one in Brian McMahon. Right. But but I mean, as a, as as a, as a school completely, I mean that's. Something that's very, very important to me right. and, and to a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, citizens in, in Norwalk also because um, it's 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 a very important thing because we want to have readiness for all of our children. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and that should be to me it should be a very big deal. In the, in, no, we'll work with with the schools to get something going in each of. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Spar. Um, that's a great question. Okay, great. So that I could uh, you know, send you towards Boston Medallia. Um, I have been in contact with the Autism Speaks group. They have a program just called Light Up Blue. Um, and I had so away for it. I received a, a large box of materials uh, on autism as well as bracelets. And uh, my daughter who attends Don High School along with a couple of friends. The, um, the week of Autism Awareness Week, April 2nd, they're going to be working with the school to have an awareness program. They're going to have each day during that week, they're going to make an announcement of a different aspect of autism over the loudspeaker. They're also going to have a table set up, and they're going to sell the bracelets for a dollar a piece, a little gel bracelets, and they're going to give the money to the Autism uh, uh, Speaks organization, and they're going to distribute for free the, um, uh, the materials. In addition, their hope is to design like a website that would have uh, photographs of kids, um, you know, wearing the bracelets or just generally, you know, making a comment about, you know, autism and then just to um, have on that website different links to go to that. So I think that's a great question that you had. I know Mom High School with my daughter's going to work on that, and I volunteer to help you with information. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I, I, I would also like to say that I, I would be, would like to be part of the discussion as well. And I think I, I do have some suggestions, and um, you should reach out to. There's a lot of children within our school district that are on this, under the spectrum, and they would like to participate, perhaps, in these sort of activities. So I'm, I'm suggesting to reach out to the clubs that, that, that are there, because I think it would be good to join with the entire school and to reach out to them as well, because the Best Buddies program is an excellent program where the, 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 the uh, children under the spectrum have a lot of problems with social skills, so that's a very uh, uh, an important important topic. I just want to make sure that all children feel included. Also, if I can, I don't mean to. It's okay. Can I say something? Is that okay. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> um, I've had some uh, commitments from um, the East Norwalk Public Library. They're going to purchase some books on autism. They're going to have them on display. I've also had some commitments from Christine Bradley. And uh, Cheryl knows this, that there are going to be some displays for autism for the kids as well. Also, I think I said everybody that on March 30th, we're going to have a Life of Green um, uh, celebration at 7 o'clock on the Green. So if the kids can know, have them there. There's going to be some, there's going to be press coverage. You know, the mayor's going to be there. Bob Bell's going to be there. Kevin <coughs> going to be there. And, um, well, yeah, the mayor and the representatives are going to be there. So. Last thing, okay. please. Yes. Okay, in April also, the Best Buddies programs, they're going to have a talent show that is held, is held every year. And, and I think it's important that as a school district, we attend this because these children, they work hard. Like we have Noah Kai and uh, uh, in, in, in Brian McMahon, they put on performances, Beauty and the Beast, um, all of these wonderful shows they have. And, and, and the children really work hard to be, they can't be part of what they're, the population in the school does when they do the musicals, so they do their own performances. And um, the attendance is, is poor. And I think that, you know, only the parents of the children are there. 
but I mean staff should be there. You know, some staff shows up. The community should be out there because this is a very important thing. And if it's, we're dedicating autism awareness for, for April, then I think everyone should really make it an effort to show up to, to, to the talent show. And it's done every year. And, I, and, and this year they, they want to do something special now that it, we've dedicated uh, April as uh, autism awareness. I think that we should really uh, publicize it and, and so, so people can show up. Maybe invite Channel 12 or maybe uh, have it advertised in the newspaper. Um, that's, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Okay. All right. And we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor of uh, designation of uh, April as Autism Awareness Month, please indicate. And that is unanimous. Thank you. All right, Jeff. All right. Uh, moving on to information and reports. February 2014 monthly financial report. Mr. Rudel is getting his exercise tonight. Questions, uh, Mr. Rue? No? Okay. Keep up the good work. All righty. Next is uh, Mayor's Engineering and Science Program for 7th and 8th graders. Oh, we already just did that. We've okay. already talked about that one, gave the update. Okay. So next is uh, Committee and Representative Reports. Uh, let's start with uh, Jack Facilities. Anything to oh, yeah. report? Okay. Sherelle, anything? Okay. Uh, Mr. Barbas, negotiations? No, personnel? I think it's pretty quiet. We're still trying to finalize food service, but the ball's in their court. Okay. Uh, policy committee? Yes, quite a bit. Okay. Um, we had our meeting tonight, a uh, very lively discussion. Everyone was present. Um, first policy was 9320, which is our meeting time. We did discuss that during our last policy meeting. We also brought it to the board a little bit last time um, for discussion. Um, we've had the 745 time period for many, many, many years. Um, so we've all discussed um, a possible time change of 7 o'clock. Um, we were all in agreement on that. Um, so we would like to, we changed the language on it, which was required from our last board meeting to look at that, to see what we can change, which we did. We'd like to bring it to the full board, our next meeting, which will be okay. April 7th for a vote. Um, if it's a yes, so we all agree, we, it's unanimous, um, it will take place um, effective April 21st for our, our meeting in April, our last meeting in April. Um, I think it would be a win-win um, for board members, community members, um, Spotlight. We have, as you can see, every meeting we have Spotlight. We have children coming in. It would be great to get them in and out and getting home, doing homework if they have to or going to sleep early. Um, but we think it just we will get more um, participation here as well if we have earlier meetings. We all agreed upon um, getting the hour involved, um, getting um, advertisement, letting parents, community members know, um, teachers, principals, that our new possible start time will be 7 o'clock, putting it on our website, um, PTOC, letting them, getting them up to date and so they know, our school messenger as well. So we just kind of wanted to get the word out early. Again, it's going for a vote, so it's not confirmed yet, but we just want to let everyone be aware that it might possibly be happening. We also discussed um, policy or bylaw 9325, which is meeting conduct. Um, we did change a little bit of the language. Um, we'd like to bring it back to the board. Um, we'll bring the bylaw back here for further discussion and hopefully for a vote on the 21st on that. Uh, information discussion, policy 6142, um, which is physical activity. Um, as I discussed during our last meeting, we do have a committee, a recess committee that Tony Dodona helped formulate um, from our elementary schools as well as our middle schools in regards to recess. We do have representation from our principals um, and parents. We do want representation from every school because it's such a critical policy and, and we're getting a lot of feedback that our children are out during recess. They're not. There's also an issue with um, our blacktop, our 
parking lot, if it's accessible for children to go outside. We realize we've had a really tough winter this year, but we want to make sure that our kids get out. So again, we have a recess committee that is looking at this. Um, they are meeting again, I believe, on March 24th. And I'm hoping, Tony, that we'll have some feedback, some ideas, some dialogue, some discussion, um, that they can come back for our next policy meeting and present their ideas to the policy committee. Um, also, if I can bring up Mr. Lyons, if it would be okay, um, Carol Marcin, I cannot pronounce her name. Miranaccio, thank you, Miranaccio. Um, we have culinary, the Norwalk High School Culinary Cafe, which I believe is open for business. We've all, yes, today, here we go. And we've all been invited as board members. And what I'd like to do, if it's possible, again, we can have a discussion on this, but it would be great if we could have a board meeting at Norwalk High School, um, just so we can try out some of their food that they're offering, which I think would be great. And I also think for discussion, I'm not sure where this can take place, but um, I think it would be really important. Um, we always have our meetings here. It would be great if we could visit some of the schools. Um, and I know when I was running, which I'm not, you know, that was a while ago, a couple years ago, but I always felt that it was important that we have meetings at our schools, at our elementary schools or middle schools and high schools. It doesn't have to be every meeting, but maybe every other month, something. I just think it's important for us to be visible. And even though we're televised, which was a huge hurdle to get that done, and I'm glad that we have that, um, parents sometimes just can't get out. If they're closer to their own home school district, it would be easier to have more parent participation in some of our meetings. So I think it would be great if we could sometimes have our meetings um, at some of our schools. And I think the way a platform for us possibly is to start it off at Newark High School. So maybe we can work on some type of date, Mr. Chairman, um, if everybody's in agreement, to have one of our board, mem board meetings at Norwalk High School. And we can have dinner, and we can have participation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mosby. Years ago, we used to have meetings at different schools um, when I was on the board previously. So, um, and, um, so how did that go? When you, I mean, how was it, the participation? It was, it was, it was good. Okay. We um, had different schools. We, we you know, so yeah. selected and we went and we had the meetings and um, it, it, it went very well. I mean, as long as I've been on the board, we've never had that. And I, I just think it's, I think we've all thought about it, just has never materialized. But I think Norwalk High School, if we could start it off there, we have a dinner, we have parents, you know, whoever would like to come, but I think it would be a great launching, a launch for us to do that. Just a thought, an idea. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Just, I think one issue with that, obviously, is, you know, we are videotaping, and I don't right, know soon it's coming, we're going to be live broadcasting our Board of Ed meetings. So obviously, if you're at another, you know, if you're at a school, odds are you're not going to be able to provide that service. And I think a lot of our residents do watch those videos. I mean, I love the idea of going yeah. to our schools. Don't get me wrong, but there are there's a trade-off. There's a trade-off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, on, I'm sorry. No, he's absolutely right. That was not an issue when we had the meeting mm -hmm. scheduled for. Right, because we schools. didn't have the TV and there was none of that. Um, the social media wasn't where it is now. So, right. um, but the fact of it is, we did. But it also it, it spoke uh, <coughs> the to the community because that was one of the other pieces that we felt when we were going into the communities, not only just the schools, uh, but also allowed some of these uh, some of our parents who were not able to get to City Hall. Look at transportation. Look at a number of things. So that was a factor as well. Okay. Uh, he said we didn't have an issue. Technology. All right, um, uh, Ms. Rebus. Yes, we also we we also when we didn't have this uh, broadcasting through the IT department, we were taping. I think uh, Jack's daughter one time she we, she was recording the the board meetings at one time. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there was a way that it was put on to the, or, or, or those meetings were recorded, and since they were taped, they were sent out to our website. Um, I was done by NEF. Yeah, yeah I get the Mara Rosado. She would record it, then she would drop it off at NEF, and then they would take it the next day, and they would put it out. Yes, I know, because she, yeah, so his daughter mm -hmm. used to do tape a lot of the meetings. But with uh, with our IT department, maybe that could be forwarded to IT, and IT could supply it and put it on our website. Um, now, you did, you did mention, uh, um, Ms. Keys, that uh, this would come back to the board when? The 21st, you said? For what? Which? Discussing the having a different school, you mean? Or no, the policy, the, uh, the, the... For the timing? Which yeah. The, time. Oh, the start time, yes. Next, that will, next board. That will come for the 7th for a vote? 
April 7th? April 7th. Yeah. Okay, April, April 7th. 7th. And then if it all, you know, it's unanimous, then it would be effective. Well, it doesn't have to be unanimous. Okay, that's true. <laughs> um, April 21st, it would go into effect. Okay, and Recall then you mentioned also earlier another date, was the 21st, you said the 21st and something, or the 20th? April 21st for that. It would be in effect yeah. for April 21st. Okay, for April 21st. And then also a meeting conduct one would also April 21st for a vote, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the vote for the vote, okay, okay. We went through the same thing in our policy. We were going back and forth between meeting conduct and meeting, so we went through the same thing. Sorry. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Plotting meetings. <laughs> Oh, Peter, Medallia, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, okay. it goes to everybody else, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Okay, uh, Curriculum Instruction Committee, we had a uh, detailed update on the uh, K-5 literacy program uh, at our last meeting. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, several topics, which I'm actually talking to Tony Dodona about what's the right order to bring these up, but we're going to be meeting with the uh, science instruction uh, specialist to give us a whole update on the K-12 science program. Um, we're going to be dealing with high school scheduling uh, and also um, looking at actual recommendations for the world languages and the social studies um, curricular upgrades. Not exactly sure what order those are going to be in yet. It's, it's you know, Tony's going to get back to me on what the priorities are, uh, but we, those will be the topics over the next couple of months. Uh, the only thing I have is athletics. Uh, I think I mentioned last at the last meeting that the Yankees are coming back to do a, uh, mm -hmm. a camp, and this year it's going to be two weeks at Brian McMahon. Uh, last year we did one week. Um, also, they have uh, tentatively agreed to do in three scholarships. Last year they did two, and I think we're going to press them for more. Uh, but letters went out to all the elementary schools and all the kids that are in that age group uh, to apply for a scholarship. Uh, so that's already been done. So we're just waiting for the applications to come back. Okay. Uh, and um, Ms. Murray, finance? Uh, no, our finance committee for March. That meeting was canceled. And, uh, with, um, first checking with the uh, staff. And our next finance meeting will be April 8th. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, on to board member announcements. Any announcements? Uh, Ms. Mosby. I'm sure with a number of other board members, um, Regina Beast, mm -hmm. Ronnie Mann was excellent. Um, as always, we have a very strong um, music and theater. Yes, in Norwalk. And I like to say Norwalk. Both high schools both do a great job. As well as the middle schools. Because that will be coming up very soon in the end of the month. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Ms. Mosby. Yeah. I only say that I um, went uh, this morning with the uh, Artie and the mayor was there to the um, grand opening of the um, Little Bear Cafe, the Atona Arts Cafe. It was, um, a, a, it was, it was great. It was wonderful. Food is good. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I went there this morning, and I went last night to Courage to Speak with um, Ginger Cats over at West Rocks. I, I attended that, and Heidi, you, you were there as well. I actually couldn't make it. Oh, you didn't? I mentioned I could not make it. Oh, okay. I wanted to, but couldn't make it. And then on Saturday, I went to the last showing of The Beauty and the Beast. And um, so the last couple of weeks have been a quite eventful week of, of enjoying Norwalk and what the what they have to offer the best of our children. And it, it was good. It was good. Okay. And I do encourage people to go over to the Little Bear Cafe. It's, it's really nice. It's, it's the way the kids have put it together. and. With the artwork and everything, it's really and and they it, you can see in there that a lot of pride has been put in there, and it's really. What's it called? The little bear. Little bear. Little bear. Little bear. Little bear. Yeah, little bear. Little bear. <laughs> little bear. Little bear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the kids are so excited, and they're um, two of them that that this was their senior project, and um and it's and, and they finally came to fruition with it, and they are excited and I'm excited for them and they were just they had a little band playing you know and everything it was it was good and everyone you know that was there and they had a nice time was casual and everything good out in um, of course you know uh, the superintendent uh, intern superintendent Connelly was there too as well and Tony Dodona I can't forget you either and Brenda so <laughs> all right um, anybody else yes uh, yes 
Yeah. Have anything? No. Uh, as you know, Winston Holland was this game. These guys did a really fantastic job putting it together. So thank you very much for including me. Uh, and some people don't know, but uh, Senator Duff and I had uh, sat and uh, had a strategy. And our strategy was, if we ever got the ball, we're going to send it over to Burt Reynolds over there. <laughs> see what he can do with it. But as you know, it didn't work out too well. But no, it didn't. <laughs> but you had a great shot time. at Jolly Green Giant. Yeah, I know. But keep us in mind for next year. I'd love to be a part of it. Thank you. Uh, also did Beauty and the Beast. Uh, it was great. And the Culinary Cafe today as well. So good things are happening in Norwalk. Absolutely. Uh, Ms. Keys. I'll echo uh, Beauty and the Beast. Fabulous. As well. I think we're all going to different times, but went, loved it. Um, wanted to mention that West Rocks, um, I believe it's next week, 10 days, yes, 9 days. Mm -hmm. Next little week, yeah. yeah, Little Mermaid, little Mermaid will be, which will be fabulous. Um, I've kind of seen a preview of it behind the scenes, um, and um, it looks fantastic. So the kids, it's great that we have these programs, and also in some of our middle schools as well. Last Friday, several of us, I know Mike, myself, and Mike B went to Brookside um, Literacy for Parents for their children, um, which they have quarterly, um, which again, they did a fabulous job on that. And to me, it's just so important to start literacy really early. Um, and that is critical and very important. And that's it. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, well, everybody's kind of stole my thunder because I, <laughs> you know I'm a champion for Norwalk Public Schools. I think we have a public school system second to none. And when you look at all the things that are happening in Norwalk, and, you know, I got so caught up in Beauty and the Beast, I was watching and hoping that that, They'd fall in love before that last pedal fell. <laughs> of course, you know the end, but you're just still hoping. And I was privileged to read the prologue on Friday night, and I never knew really the story of the whole thing and how it happened. Uh, but that and the literacy for parents and the Harlem Wizards game and uh, the tribute to, to um, Mo Tomlin, uh, all those kinds of things that are happening in the Norwalk Public School System, the Little Bear Cafe, which we went to today. And, um, you know, it's just an amazing thing to see all this happening. Um, I, I just think that this is a wonderful school system. And I just thank everybody because this is really a collaboration of uh, the Board of Education, of the staff in the schools, of the students. Uh, everybody just pitches in and really it's a it's just an amazing thing to see. So thank you to all of you for all your hard work. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Sherelle, did you have your no? I okay. didn't, but I, I do want to mention that Maureen Ruby will be at the South Norwalk Library okay. tomorrow evening, 6 to 8, discussing pre and pro post testing. Okay. And if she's anything like she was in our curriculum meeting, the parents and whoever comes will be in for a treat. Yes, yeah, I agree. I just, I mean, I'll just follow up kind of a little bit of what Harry's saying. I mean, I went to something for the board of head every night last night. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, it went from financial to reading to entertainment. Um, and so, they're, you know, that's what you do. Obviously, when yeah. you're on the board, there are a lot of different interests lot going that on. you're partaking in. Uh, but I will say, you know, Maureen Ruby at the curriculum committee meeting really was impressive. And I think what should go on the record is, you know, there's this big battle that people are trying to incite about testing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, should kids opt out of testing? And some towns are allowing kids to opt out of testing. I don't think we've taken a policy yet. But I'm seeing more and hearing more and more noise. Some of it's a political issue with kind of whatever, freedom of I don't know what. Um, but I think it is something we might want to address. Um, you know, and if you listen to Maureen, you'd be a convert that all this assessment is great. Um, but I have spoken to some teachers that, you know, some of the stuff, especially with the curriculum we chose, Journeys has like crazy amount of, of testing that, as I'm not sure, the value of it maybe could be debated. So we probably want to revisit that. But I think any parent who is concerned about testing should come out to the South North Public Library tomorrow and listen to Maureen because she really has a very convincing argument that all this assessing, it's not necessarily testing, but assessments are very, very valuable, and especially with our goal of wanting to close the achievement gap, um, which is, you know, what could be more important than that, you know, maybe a little over-testing, if you want to call it that, is, is required at the start. What, what time is tomorrow night? It, it's 6 to 8, but she uses the term progress monitoring, which is, she has a really good analogy for, for that, so mm -hmm. I just... So I would, I would encourage, you know, and I know there are members here from the PTOC to spread the word to your communities that, you know, they should come come here, have, you know, hear a little bit about this, because this is becoming a very big topic. As it hasn't been in Norwalk yet, but it definitely is in other parts of the state and, uh, and across the country. Okay. Uh, 
Jack. Hi. Right. I just want to respond to uh, Ms. Ben Williams' remarks, uh, erroneous remarks that racism to me is just as ugly in any color you serve it. Uh, I had a discussion and something on, as we mostly do on our private Facebooks that someone basically hacked and took some information out of a, of a, of a, of a dialogue that I had. And uh, while I may not have used, I would have, may have used in private more flowery language than I would use it in an open forum like this, I did not slur any ethnic group. I did have a problem with, ethnic, uh, with uh, racial bias, not just in the city here, but on the, by this government. How some certain interracial actions that happen out there are broadcast and given to us 24-7, even lied about over and over and ugly protests, while others that are just equally as gross because they're the other way flipped are overlooked. So I am pretty much disgusted, number one, that you people would go into my private discussions and try to use it in public because we're all members here of the board. We have our own lives. We're just like you. And while we're here in this room, we're board members. But to use such low-life ways and try to use disgusting blackmail tactics, okay, that to me was disgusting. And I'll challenge anybody to go right ahead. But I, and I'll give you plenty of examples if you want. But I do not like seeing interracial uh, uh, biases, not by our government leaders and not by our town. And I'll stick by that. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Murray. Yes. I think it's uh, a place that's a step. I understand we have our committee uh, reports, but um, Mo Tomlin, he gave a lot to this community. He gave a lot to this district. I think uh, Susan Korshak and her staff uh, did an outstanding job at the memorial. Uh, the Braddock Man Auditorium, I'm sorry, gymnasium was packed. Um, and I don't have to tell you about Calvary Baptist Church and the service and what have you, but um, I just think that there might be something uh, when you heard, uh, I think it was his former coach, talk about Mo's contribution. There might be something there that we might want to uh, recognize to his family. Um, everyone notes his young son, um, who was outstanding. Um, I'll leave it there, he's brilliant. Um, but the fact is, I just think that the board needs to look at that a little closer and see if there's a recognition of something that needs to be done uh, for Mo, for what he's given to Noah Public Schools, as well as the community. Okay. Thank okay. you. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Mr. Common Council meeting on Tuesday night, we're also, uh, I've asked Travis Sims, who is um, uh, Mo Tomlin's cousin, uh, to uh, get up and make a little comment about Mo and recognize him for all the wonderful contributions. A lot of people, uh, don't realize how much he did in his own time over at the Carver Foundation, helping young people uh, keep them off the streets and getting them engaged in some healthy activities and learning how to the team spirit. And he was uh, really quite a guy. So uh, uh, I, I totally agree. And our students were outstanding as well. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Uh, first is the meeting of February 24, 2015, special meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Simmons moves. Is there a second? Ms. Keyes seconds. Any corrections, changes? Page, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. over here we're um, page um, 10. It was a discussion that I had um, about the um, minutes uh, from the Finance Committee not 
showing about the special ed, having the, uh, the special ed person come in and um, meet with us. And I don't see anything in here where, because we said maybe through the curriculum, and um, I don't see in here where, where we said that we were going to bring the person back to a curriculum meeting or to a board meeting or something to come in and try to give us more of a, a ex ex explanation on the budget transfers of you know large um, you know money that was um, transferred over the last couple of months. Yeah, I recall that. You check the tape. Just make sure her comments are properly added into that paragraph. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other changes, corrections? All right. If none, with that correction noted, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. And unanimous. Thank you. And next is uh, March 3, 2015 uh, special meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? March 3. That's special March meeting. 3. It wasn't a special oh. meeting. Oh, the first one was a special meeting. Yes. I'm sorry. I was reading the okay. wrong line item. <laughs> March 3 was the regular meeting. Uh, Mr. Kassimus moves to approve. Ms. Murray moves uh, seconds. Any uh, changes or corrections? All right. Hearing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All opposed? Abstentions? One, two, three. Okay, six in favor, none opposed, three abstentions, and the minutes are approved. All right, at this point, the uh, chair would entertain a motion to go into executive session one for the purpose of discussion of security matters, and two, discussion of roles, responsibilities, of administrative staff. Mr. Kassimus moves, Ms. Mosby seconds. All in favor? Please indicate. Motion carries. We will take a 10 minute recess and reconvene. Thanks, I mean, here. Right here. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> we'll start off the exact session. Uh, oh, you're kidding. Just chime in anytime. You're right next to me.